When the National Farmers Organization called together a farm power meeting for action at Des Moines, August 3rd, it surprised many by drawing 10,000 people. They came from all across the United States in chartered buses, their own cars, and even some chartered planes, those who came from the east and west coasts. We're going to give you highlights from the address to the Farmers and Ranchers of America by Oren Lee Staley, president of the NFO. But first, here's a view of the unusual nature of the turnout by an experienced farm news director from one of Iowa's leading farm stations, KMA Shenandoah. We talked to Creighton Canal of KMA. Creighton, you've covered a lot of farm meetings. Did the size of this crowd surprise you? Yes. I was uh, surprised the fact that you could get farmers at this time of the year to get together for the discussion of mutual problems. I think that farmers in general are finding that they do have some power, but they've got to get together and get it done. I think they're getting more and more interested in what happens in their organizations today than they have in, in let's say, the immediate past because I don't think they're sitting back and buying this idea that the farmer has no voice in anything that happens. I think they're finding that they can have a voice if they get together and show that they have things that they want to do. And now highlights from Staley's address to the Des Moines crowd. He makes this comment on one of the most frequently recurring topics at any farm gathering. Can Washington solve the farm problem? I think it's time that Washington came to the farmers instead of the farmers going to Washington. After Staley outlines NFO objectives, and after discussion during the afternoon, a resolution came from the floor urging a program of increased farm production going through NFO. Here's where Staley first talked about it. I think we've got to go out of here with benchmarks, goals. I think we've got to go out of here with a goal of increasing our volume through our commodity programs 50% by the first day of September. That's not going to require too much. A semi-load of hogs extra from a county, maybe a load of milk is about what it requires from the counties. It's all there. Grain is not as easy. You know what? If we don't get grain stored at harvest time, we're going to kill the grain market for the next four or five months if this crop develops. We'd better learn that grain program requires two things. One is having your own storage at harvest time so you don't dump it on the market, and the other is moving it in an orderly marketing. And Staley refers to the March 1st moving day tradition of rural America. There's one day that used to be known and is still known as moving day in this country in rural areas, and that's March 1st. We like to be able to move into cost of production plus reasonable profit contracts on moving day next spring before another crop goes in. At the conclusion, Staley said this, after raising the question whether the NFO is still militant. I want to see us give the companies of this country an opportunity to sign contracts at the cost of production plus a reasonable profit when we have the production going together and united. And if they don't, I'll be the first to call with a dynamic loudest voice that I know how that we go on strike or have a holding action until the food's not available to the people in this country until they pay the price. The 10,000 farmers and ranchers who came to Des Moines, Iowa early in August to plan strategy for farm power heard Walter Hackney, among other top professionals of the National Farmers Organization. Hackney is head of the NFO Slaughter Cattle Division. He was added to the growing staff of recognized pros in NFO bargaining. Hackney's record includes buyer for Iowa beef processors. He set up the Cooperative Garden City, Kansas beef kill. He was a chief procurement officer for Missouri beef processors, and he served as vice president for procurement for the K Corporation, a company operating many of the nation's leading stockyards. Hackney is a graduate of Oklahoma State University. 
Early in his address to the big crowd at Des Moines, Hackney defined what farm power means. The term farm power to me as an ex-corporate individual literally sends chills up my back. And I'll tell you why. Because farm power to an agricultural corporation such as a packing industry means one thing. It means that they, as a corporation, lose their ability to trade with you one-on-one. -on -one. It means that they, as a corporation, lose the uh, ability to come to you with their professionals and trade with you as a disillusioned person who think you have the ability to trade with them, and in most cases, trade your socks off and balance their corporate profit pictures. At another point, Walter Hackney tells how he has viewed NFO from his perspective as a packing industry official and where NFO stands today. Now, the thing that possibly would be interesting for you to know is where we have come from. I don't know what your opinion of the National Farmers Organization has been in the last several years, but mine's been pretty dim. But I can tell you where you're at today. In May of 1978, the National Farmers Organization on the west side of the Corn Belt in the Nebraska and Iowa area specifically, exceeded the USDA quoted market tops every week for eight straight weeks on fed cattle. The National Farmers Organization on the east end of the Corn Belt, specifically in the Mississippi River area, did exactly the same thing and had that same exact reputation. We also in the states of Wisconsin and Minnesota consistently, repeatedly exceeded the quoted USDA market tops on cull cows. Hackney looks toward the objective of cost of production contracts. If you will give me the extra additional volume that I require to go to these packers tomorrow and tell them that we in fact at this time do have the extra volume they ask for, that I want a cost of production contract plus a reasonable profit, that is at the time that we shall get it. Now I can assure you of one thing. This is not a mystic goal that I'm reaching for. I personally today have in my possession written statements from the respective processors that we're doing business with that simply state that when I come to them with that additional volume that is significant and definite in their sales requirements, that they will in fact sit down with me and negotiate the cost of produ production plus the reasonable profit for that National Farmers Organization. That was Walter Hackney, head of the Slaughter Cattle Division, as he addressed the big farm power meeting at Des Moines, called early in August by the National Farmers Organization. He noted that NFO members have received premiums consistently above quoted USDA tops in both the western and eastern ends of the Corn Belt in every week for eight weeks and consistently exceeded the market tops in cull cows. He also noted that packers have given written statements assuring negotiations for cost of production contracts when NFO volume reaches a level that would justify such contracts. At the big farm power meeting at Des Moines, Iowa, several of the 10,000 farmers and ranchers who attended early in August will be heard today, just as we interviewed them on the floor and in the balconies. Our procedure was to go from one floor microphone to another to get on-the-spot conversations with those who had just addressed a question or made a comment to the whole crowd from the floor mic. More than half the total time of the meeting was given over to this free exchange of ideas as the farm power meeting mapped strategy for working collectively in the marketplace. Here's an interview with a Missourian, Joyce Bartelsmeyer. You made one central point about the government. Go through that again, will you? Well, I, uh, I don't believe in uh, taking our problems to the government because they never were solved there at all. The problem is in Washington right now. The bureaucrats is running Washington, and, and we can't get anything solved there by taking it to Washington. They promised a lot of things, but they never have come through with them just like Carter has. Carter never come through with his. He, he, there, he hurt us on the beef. And uh, th that was a psychological move, what he made there. And it really didn't help the consumer any. I'm for the consumer, too, because I'm a big consumer myself. So I, I don't think we ought to take our problems to Washington. I think we ought to solve them here. 
I'm talking now with a man from Arkansas who spoke from one of the microphones on the floor at this farm power meeting in Des Moines. Give us your name again first. I'm Bob Manley. I'm president of Miller County, Arkansas, NFO. You described the conditions, drought conditions in Arkansas. What about that? Well, we just have uh, practically nothing. We, everything is burned, our pasture land's gone, cattle are eating the bushes. We have no hay, with very, very few exceptions. We have very little hay. No feed grains are being grown at all. The farmers are cutting and baling their soybean vines because they, they're not producing. And they're going to plan to feed that to their cattle just to, just to make out till winter. Okay, you made a point about this uh, that was interesting to the people in the National Farmers Organization, and you got some applause on it. Uh, what is your point? Well, the point is I want us to do something concrete. Uh, we have every right in the world to pr uh, price our products, and uh, it's time we do it. Uh, every merchant in the country, you go into his store, you'll see that he has his price plainly stated on every item, and I don't think the farmers should be any different. I think we should do the same thing. We should price every product that we produce on the farm. You said to these people at this meeting that you were going to have to buy some of the farm products to feed the livestock in your drought-stricken area. Now, wouldn't this work a hardship on Arkansas people who've been hit by a drought? Well, it, no, it won't, because we're going to have to buy it anyway, and we're going to have to pay the same price. It's just the idea of whether these people here want to get that price or whether they want to give it to the middlemen. And uh, it doesn't matter to us. We want to see all farmers uh, progress. And if we buy their grain and they can get more, then maybe we can get a little more for our milk and beef. Paul Myers from uh, Mound Valley, Kansas, in Labette County. I'm working for the same wages I was back in 1950 on a farm, and I think we're entitled to start getting our cost of production plus a little profit. Farmers is going to have to do something now or it's going to be too late. I'm having a conversation now with Lee Schultz from Scotland County, Missouri. You spoke from one of the microphones here on the floor at the farm power meeting, and you made a point that got a lot of applause. Would you go through that again? I believe that if there's going to be anything done in agriculture, it's up to farmers themselves. They have to work together, and that working together includes putting 100% of their production through the collection, dispatch, and delivery system. Those were just some of the interviews we got with those farmers and ranchers among the 10,000 who came to Des Moines early in August to build farm power. A resolution was adopted to increase by 50% the volume going through the collection, dispatch, and delivery system of the National Farmers Organization, and to build enough volume to get cost of production contracts by the farmers' traditional moving day, March 1st. Also, the NFO's holding action was reaffirmed as a final alternative to back up bargaining processes. Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about.